Hi everyone, is Corey Feldman okay here? The internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the self-titled Super Organism album. Super Organism is a London-based music collective with like seven or eight musicians who actually managed to land a hit, a viral internet hit, before they even met in person. That's the future now. Bands, duos, musical projects, rap groups, everybody's just meeting each other and collabing on the internet. What's what it is. Well, even though this phenomenon is relatively new, Super Organism sound on some of their biggest tracks to me read as being kind of old. Their music called back to the dense, quirky, playful instrumentation that used to get tons of attention in the indie scene in the 2000s through artists that kind of sat at a crossroads between pop music and psychedelic music, as well as like maybe even electronics and glitch pop, Dientel and the Unicorns, Sweet Trip or Fiery Furnaces, maybe like anything off of Elephant Six. I could also see fans of Animal Collective and Flaming Lips appreciating what Super Organism has to offer. Maybe I'm going a tad bit too far with the comparisons there, but there is something about this band's music that just reads to me as, as studied. They don't sound like a bunch of kids with no frame of music or cultural reference just throwing a bunch of shit at a wall or trying to copy one of their contemporaries. So while Super Organism sound has kind of a familiar energy to me, they do bring more synthetic and punchier production than I'm used to hearing with this stuff. More funky beats, insane samples that do so much to color the topics of these songs, like motivational speaker Tony Robbins, or like vocals from what sounds like uh, a nature documentary. Water splashing, alarm clocks ringing, snapping cam cameras, people eating, crowds cheering, car horns honking, just to name a few things. I mean, the band's music isn't so sample heavy that they're like the books or anything like that, but you know, it's it's pretty plunder phonic. Accompanying these samples in the mix are of course all these fat, bulgy, rumbling synth lines, stringy guitars, sweet background vocals, trippy effects, lots of weird glitchy embellishments and edits. There's a lot to this band sound. So many of these tracks, while they are super catchy, super easygoing, very poppy, are very intricate. The most unassuming thing about the band's sound has to be the vocals of their front woman, Orno Noguchi, who pretty much sings every track in this semi-deadpan, very gentle, very warm and welcoming vocal delivery. It's not too animated, it's not too expressive, it's not exactly ear-grabbing, but couched in the incredibly dense and colorful and, and vibrant sound of Super Organism's instrumentation, it works. And even though Orno isn't a very animated singer, she does manage to express a very potent sense of millennial malaise. I'll say that. Pretty consistently, these songs are just an explosion of texture and color, which is great. I love that about the album, but at the end of the day, it is the very dreamy, endearing tunes that kind of sells this record. The song Everybody Wants to Be Famous, the sliding guitars and really trippy effects and samples and edits, the earworm hook, I could go into all of this stuff all day. But really what I like about the track is that it's, it's an interesting little statement on vanity and uh, a desire for fame in the social media age. Call it an anthem for internet stardom if you want. I also love the very blissful Nobody Cares, which to me almost seems like the antithesis of the track that I just mentioned, where it, it seems almost like a, a moment of, of serenity and freedom where you can kind of do whatever you want because nobody's bothering you, nobody cares. I don't know if maybe this is kind of like a coming of age song or an adulthood song, but the previous track that I mentioned is all about having people's eyes on you, whereas this track is, is very much about uh, nobody really being concerned about much of anything you do. Also, the crunchy skipping beat, the vocal harmonies, the laser synthesizers, and the twisted manipulated guitar lines bring this track a lot of instrumental color. The equally sticky and surreal something for your mind is just pure surreal ear candy. It's all good while not maybe the best song on the record is a good tone setter on the album for me, with all of the songs welcoming and very funny samples, the boomy beat, and very cheery background vocals, and the title track on this album is, is kind of like a, 
I don't know, like a mission statement for the band. This track is pretty much super organism sound to a T. It's just like lots of funky beats and crazy sonic fireworks flying by in every direction. And even though it's very hectic, there's a lot of cacophony. There are a lot of weird, intricate little additions to the song everywhere, all over the track. It's, it's still very catchy. And given the tone set by the lyrics, Kind of silly and, and tongue-in-cheek too. Even the song Reflections on a Screen has grown on me since I've listened to the album again and again and again. Sure, the best coast-ish beach guitars played throughout the track do kind of put a sink in my stomach, but still, uh, I think the track is really cute. You can throw it onto the ever-growing pile of millennial love songs set in the age of the internet where you have basically a, a longing and emotion being played placed on a stage of glowing screens and empty chat boxes. My issue with the record, though, is that it's kind of short, it's just 30 minutes and change, and it's kind of front-loaded. Around the middle half of the album, it, it does start to fall apart a little bit. The song Nye's March has a great sense of place, especially with its story, with its samples, but it, it's, it's maybe... Uh, the most underwritten song on the entire record. The song Prawn Song is, is almost bordering on novelty. It, it seems almost like too silly for me to take seriously in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I, I appreciate that it's trying to have fun though. Uh, maybe people will enjoy it more who relate to a lyric about kissing a prawn and getting a cold sore. And the song Nighttime, while it, it is kind of a catchy, funky, fun tune to end the album off, uh, Production-wise, it, it's one of the blander tracks on the record. Like, the instrumentation, it, it's not quite as adventurous and cutting-edge as it is on nearly every other song here. Overall, I thought this album was pretty good. Enjoyed it a lot. Certainly a lot more high points than low in the track listing here. I just wish it was a bit more consistent, and I... I wish that there was just more. Still, this thing is one of the more creative pop records I've heard this year, and uh, I encourage everyone to give it a shot, at, at least uh, the most popular tracks, the big singles from the album. I'm feeling a decent two strong seven on this thing. Transition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head are a couple videos you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Super Organism Forever.